So let's see what is the best way to actually create a singleton class or singleton function or singleton object. So, I mean, this is called different by different people. But the idea is we want to create an object which is going to be a single object throughout the application. So if you see this configuration manager, so there are some classes which you don't need to replicate or have multiple instances of those classes. So you want to create them only once. But because you have written code in such a way that your design is trying to create this instance in lazy fashion until unless this get instance is called, this configuration will never be created. Otherwise, there is no issue. In the main function, the very first line should be instance is equal to new configuration, then there is no race. But the point is you want to instantiate it using lazy loading then comes the issue and get instance is called from multiple function i mean multiple threads so there is a race so when there is a race there is a mutex not always but here this is first example okay let's talk about the example now so in simple term if someone is asking you to write a thread save function this is how you are going to implement it the moment you'll go inside this function you will try to log this mutex and say that okay if this instance is available i mean not available i'll create it if it is available just return it that's it but the problem with this function is every time you want to get some instance i mean this configuration instance it will lock and unlock for no reason but here you can see we always needed this construction only once. Now this construction is never going to happen. So this lock is no longer useful after one time. Then this is not a good design. I mean, this is wastage of resources. Okay. Now look at the second example here. This is very famous. I mean, for quite long time, I was thinking that this is really a safe example. I mean, this is a safe way to do this. And it was overcoming the first problem where we had to lock it uh, no matter this instance is already created or not so if you see this yeah first we'll check if instance is present or not if it is not present then i will lock so this looks cool right i mean why would you lock if you don't want to create the instance then everyone was very happy okay first check this and then if it is null meaning if instance is not present then only lock and do the job right but here is a catch there is a problem and there is a big problem with this function because your compiler can rearrange the instructions what i mean is i'll give you a scenario here let's suppose thread one is trying to check this if this is equal to null or not and thread zero the first thread which actually got to pass this line this line and this line and that thread is at this line. So the compiler can rearrange this single instruction into three different instruction and it can reorder that. So let me show you what that reorder is. This can be done in three steps. Notice this, this is very important, otherwise you will not get it. If I'm supposed to execute this instruction, what this will do, it will create a dynamic memory because we are using new here and it will call the constructor on that dynamically created memory. And then that address will be initialized to instance. So this is looking cool, right? If this is the order of the execution, there is no issue. But if this is the order, let's say this, I'll cut this and put it here. Okay, now this whole thing is messed up and this is actually possible by the way. So create the dynamic memory, we created how much memory we needed and then we assigned that newly created memory to this instance. Oh my God, there is no object constructed yet, but we got the dynamic memory, right? That address is now assigned to this instance. Now we are going to construct the object. Okay, so this scenario is clear. Let's see our previous scenario when I told thread one is executing this and thread zero have done executing this. Then thread one will see, okay, instance is equal to equal to null pointer. No, it is not. So assign address to instance was done by thread zero. So this is already done, meaning this instance is holding the address, but it's not a valid address because construction is yet to be done. It's not done yet. Then thread one will think, okay, I'll just return this instance. The moment you get this instance, you'll try to call and do stuff with this, right? Then you will crash or undefined behavior because this is not fully constructed. So this is the problem with the double check. And there is a way to fix this. 
double check i'll not go there because then this video is going to be very lengthy and then we'll lose the essence so this is what is happening okay in double check we all know that okay double check is really very good we all been praising this but there is this issue here okay i hope i have explained it well okay now let's look at the actual or the best way available for now so there is this once flag this is especially designed for these kind of purposes so using std call once so you'd see the scenario right you just want to call this initialization once once it is done you don't want to initialize this whole object again then this is a classic problem and c++ developers notice this and they give you this call once function which is part of the std so this is how you will use it you will call the function and give this flag here this flag is used to maintain the state so we all know this get instance is being called by multiple threads so this flag is used to tell those different threads okay this is already being processed you wait you are not the guy who reached here first so you'll have to wait some different thread is actually working on this so using this flag will tell to the coming threads that someone has already win the race and the initialization is going on wait so this flag will help you in that case so they have i mean c++ developers have not mentioned like what are the states of this it's like an implicit because they have the thread function and that thread function will actually understand what the state is so hypothetically if you will ask me there can be three different states first is not started so the very first thread will see that stage not started it will put this stage into in progress so this is the second stage and maybe done could be the third stage so those threads which are coming later will know that okay this is being processed we have to wait and then you have to give this lambda function or maybe a function pointer so this is much more cleaner the intention is very much clean so if you see this function directly you can just think that okay this is going to get initialized and this is one time job so i like this very much they have done a fantastic job here okay so last one is our magic bullet so from c++11 this static variables are thread safe okay how they have done that they have i mean they have not exposed that maybe they have but somewhere i have read that if you create an instance of static type they guard it so they guard with the lock so that no different threads can actually create in multiple time so if you just see the single line this is not just a single line there is a lock above and there is a release i mean lock and unlock is there compiler will change this line into multiple lines okay so that it will be thread safe so you can use this also if you just want to create one instance but let's say you have a very big role to perform and that role is not just creating one instance that job is maybe quite big uh, because initialization can take so much time right so let's suppose that is very big and cumbersome maybe then in that case you should definitely use this call once otherwise as i said if it is just simple one object construction and this is just going to take very small amount of time then you can go for this static magic bullet and this will not disappoint you so uh yeah i think we are done here i hope i was clear throughout the video if i was not and you have some confusion maybe you don't understand some terminologies you can comment i see people in my comment section they are very much helpful they will try to pull the information from internet and try to help you in that case and i am always there so yeah i'll see you in the next videos guys bye bye take care